I am Dr. Utsho Basu. I am a consultant physician and diabetologist from Kolkata. Today we will be discussing about hypertension, its management, its prevention. Hypertension, we all know, is a very important aspect in healthy lifestyle management. But it is also a neglected aspect as well because of the lack of knowledge that most of the people are having regarding it. So what is basically hypertension? We are all aware about this term hypertension, but seldomly we know about the proper meaning of the word hypertension. Basically, what is hypertension? Hypertension is nothing but when our blood pressure is more than a cutoff level. So this cutoff level is set based on various studies that determine what should be the blood pressure level in order to maintain a healthy life without any complications. So whenever our heart pumps blood into the blood vessels, this blood exerts certain pressure on the blood vessel. So this pressure, if it goes above the cutoff level that is fixed by, by various studies, we uh, call that as hypertension. But it should be persistent, means only a once an incidence increase in a blood pressure doesn't mean the person is having hypertension. Persistently, if the blood pressure is above that cutoff normal level, then we term the person as hypertension. So basically, what is this cutoff level? There are two types of blood pressure management, rather blood pressure measurement. One is systolic blood pressure and another is diastolic blood pressure. Whenever our heart pumps, means the heart contracts, the blood, blood goes into the blood vessels, that pressure exerted on the blood vessel is called systolic blood pressure. During the heart beats, the heart relaxes and take rest during two beats. And in that case, whatever pressure exerted by the blood on the lateral wall of the blood vessels is the diastolic blood pressure. There are various studies, various uh, uh, literatures are there in, for finding out the exact cutoff level. But basically, if a person's blood pressure is below 120 millimeter of Markelly systolic and 80 millimeter of Markelly diastolic, then the person is termed as normotensive, means blood pressure is under control. But if it goes above 140 and 80, then we term the person as hypertension. So now coming to the risk factors of hypertension. So what are the basically risk factors of hypertension? Risk factors, there are certain risk factors which are irreversible. We cannot reverse that. And certain risk factors are reversible. Now the irreversible risk factors are age, ethnicity, family history of hypertension, etc. But we are concerned about the reversible risk factors of hypertension for our healthy lifestyle. First comes among reversible uh, cause, uh, reversible risk factors of hypertension is addiction. Addiction, it can be smoking, it can be alcohol also, or any form of tobacco. Then coming to the pattern of dietary habits, what we are having, means what type of food we are intaking, uh, how much saturated fat is there in the food, how much salt we are intaking. So these are all the risk factors of hypertension. Now, then coming uh, to the third risk factor, that is the modif third modifiable risk factor is how active we are, means physical activity. So physical activity plays one of the crucial role for management and also prevention of hypertension. So these are basically in short, the risk factors of hypertension. Now, on this false hypertension day, that is 17th of May 2023, our, our main motto is to measure how our blood pressure is, get aware and treat it or prevent development of hypertension in order to lead a healthy life. Because we all know, if our blood pressure is not under control, then various complications can come. Hypertension, though initially it is a silent killer because it's seldom present with any symptoms initially. Once it comes, it, it, be, uh, it goes above a certain level, then some certain common symptoms sets in. Like the patient may be coming up with complaints of headache, blurry vision, vertigo, then chest pain, shortness of breath. Then some patient will coming uh, with complaints of swelling in their both feet, etc. But most of us, we, uh, whenever we screen a patient with the help of a, uh, a blood pressure measuring device, 
that is commonly known as sphygmomanometer incidentally we find that the patient blood pressure is quite high so we uh, frequently ask the patient to measure the blood pressure because one incidental finding is not uh, uh, complete for terming the patient as tagging the patient as a hypertensive patient so we advise the patient to measure their blood pressure on a routine basis keep a note of it and come back to us and we will be uh, assessing that how the blood pressure was and accordingly we will be suggesting therapy or pre uh, preventive uh, lifestyle management for the patient now basically what uh, we do whenever a patient comes we measure the blood pressure with the help of a uh, instrument called sphygmomanometer but initially the when the whenever the patient comes we do not jump into measuring the blood pressure because we at least need 5 to 6 minutes for the patient to calm down after the patient is comfortable we measure the blood pressure in three different take three different reading and take the average then we measure then we come to the conclusion whether the patient is hypertensive or not once hypertension is diagnosed or the patient is in pre hypertensive stage means it is uh, the blood pressure is in the range of for example say 130 70 so uh, it it is in the range of pre hypertension because normal we already know that it is between 120 70 is below that is normal and if it is in the range of 135 uh, systolic and diastolic in the range of 75 80 then this is called pre hypertension so we advise the patient for certain preventive measures so that the patient doesn't goes to overt hypertension there are various categories of hypertension stage 1 stage 2 i am not going to the detail of it or we are discussing on a basic aspect so what are the preventive aspects as i already told you that among the risk factors there are certain risk factors that are modifiable that we can modify so if we modify the risk factors then we cut down the risk of hypertension on a great way so first comes the addiction so whatever kind of tobacco addiction the patient is having or we are having we need to omit that because smoking or any kind of tobacco intake is directly linked for increasing the blood pressure in our blood vessels so we should be omitting that third coming to the dietary aspects dietary aspect is one of the crucial aspect because dietary aspect directly increases the blood sugar because whatever how the uh, amount of salt we are intaking whether we are taking excess salt or whether we are taking salt from external source or during our meal also whatever salt in in any form whether it is many patients are asking that fried salt may be good that not the case salt in any form is harmful for our blood pressure so we should be cut down our salt intake and in the food intake we should be focusing on some foods that are uh beneficial for our health like green leafy vegetables then fruits having the uh, uh, skin skinny fruits these are all helping us for a proper management of our diet in this aspect there is a term called dash diet dash diet is dietary approach to stop hypertension we encourage the patients to take whole grains fruits vegetable skim uh, milk etc these are all the products that are helping in proper management of our blood pressure after the dietary aspect uh, not to forget uh, we shouldn't take any fast food or ready to eat food that are containing high saturated fatty acids these are all harmful things for our uh, normal healthy lifestyle after diet comes the physical activity physical activity is one of the most crucial activity for control of blood pressure because if we are physically active we can control our obesity and in case in that case we can also reduce the lifestyle disorders the burden of the diseases can be decreased how active we are that uh, helps uh, that determines how good uh, healthy we are so physical activity we at least 5 days a week we need to be doing moderate physical activity to control our blood pressure level our blood cholesterol level and also our blood sugar level so moderate physical activity 5 days a week is the minimum cut off level irrespective of the age of the patient these are all the preventive aspects now why we are so much concerned about hypertension 
Hypertension, though is it, it is a silent killer, initially it doesn't come with symptoms as I already told you. But if it comes with symptoms, it also comes with other comorbidities also. Because if blood pressure is not under strict control, then there are chances that we are prone to get stroke, heart attack, myocardial infarction, uh, peripheral vascular diseases, etc. So there is lots and lots of uh, critical diseases are there that can come up if we are not controlling our blood pressure in a proper way. Then for control of blood pressure, in addition to the lifestyle modification, another important aspect is adherence to the medications. We should be adhered to the medications once we are diagnosed hypertension. Once we are diagnosed hypertension, we need to take our pills on time as per the prescription given by your doctor. And we are not doctors ourselves, we need to listen to our caregivers properly and, and follow their advices. Many of the patients stop their medication on their own. That is not acceptable because you are hampering your own health. So you should be adhered to the medication, whatever your doctor has prescribed. If you are facing any uncomfortability or any problems regarding the medication, talk with your doctor. Then, according to your problem, the doctor will be there to guide you. So, preventive measures, adherence to medication. Now, last but not the least, one of the most neglected and crucial aspect of blood pressure management is stress. During this 2023 time, we have already passed the COVID period and still we are going in a phase where there is a lot of stress. Whatever job we are, be doctors or any kind of professionals are in under a lot of stress. That can be work-related stress, that can be personal life-related stress. These all stresses are directly impacting our blood pressure. So stress is one of the neglected but one of the most crucial thing that is affecting our blood pressure. So we must know how to keep our stress under control. Stress For stress control, proper sleep is necessary. So sleep also plays a crucial part in management of blood pressure. To control your stress, you need to meditate at least 30 minutes per day. So 30 minutes of meditation helps you to reduce your stress. Spend time with your loved ones. At least find some time for your recreational activities. That will help you to calm down your stress level so that you can manage your blood pressure on a better way. Sleep at least for an adult, sleep of seven to eight hours, undisturbed sleep is mandated. We are going to the bed late, rising up late. These are all affecting our blood pressure and even other structures of our body. So we need to be going to our bed, switch off our mobiles and uh, cut off our uh, contacts with all the social medias what we are having. Then we can have proper sleep. If we are going to our bed with a mobile in our hand, we are hampering our own health. So to lead a proper healthy life, we need to be aware about all those aspects so that we can keep our blood pressure under control and we can live longer and live a healthy life in a fit way. Be physically active, adherent to your medications, listen to what your doctor advise, have proper diet, and find time for your recreation activity or hobbies. Thank you.